what were you we talking about? We were talking about to figure out the icebreaker. It's like 6.30, so let's like blast through this. I prefer using the ice cube trays that have the, the twist mechanism where they're just plastic and you just snap the ice out instead of having a nice. lever. I've had some of those that are, they work real well, and then others that the ice just won't pop out of. Carl and Goose oh, the lever ones always That's break. Zed likes the metal ones. Uh, so I like the ones where like you've got the metal dividers and you can pull them out and it just shatters them all. This is the best ice Rocks broke. fall, everyone dies. We, we broke Zach. What? <laughs> you guys are the worst. You're the so absolute worst. So my second character. <laughs> That's good stuff. Holy crap. New oh, arc. Man. Yeah, I'm okay with that. That works. Worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. You know, I didn't even get into ice skating. It was great, and falling through into the lake. That's that's. Or how to make your own ice in a life uh, survival. How do I or, put up with this? Uh, ice fishing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Seriously, ice fishing use, using using the power augers. Those are awesome. Building a blue. Why did I choose to play games with you guys? <laughs> because you love us. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Oh, I need to to get through this, man. You know, I have to, not only do I have to listen to you guys now, but I have to listen to you guys in like four days that I edit this also. (laughs) Oh, double the pain. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 20 of RPGs Anonymous. I am Zachary, your GM. Take it away, that one over there. Hi there, Zachary. My name's Aaron. Pleasure to be here. Guys, everywhere. I am playing Shane Goose Bailey. I'm playing Dr. Zed. And I'm playing Tyke. Welcome! Uh, What do you guys remember from last time? We're stuck in the armory with an unconscious guard and... An unconscious scientist, if I remember. Oh, I thought we convinced the scientists to leave. No, if I remember correctly, you guys duct taped into it to a chair, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and gagged him. Yeah, and gagged him. Yeah, because he started screaming and we had to... Okay. So long story short, uh, you guys are infiltrating the IS Corp presence in the Portland building, going through, doing that thing, trying to find some information about Goose's murdered wife, and you're on now the first secure level. This is the place that you guys were when you were going through your orientation, and you, uh, yeah, you made it through a couple of rooms, uh, through the conference rooms and stuff like that, and into the armory. Oh, and Tyke bullshitted our way through the checkpoint. It was the best. Yes, he did. There was a lot of bullshit. (laughs) I remember that very well. I'm interested today in starting with sort of lay of the land outside the actual compound. Not the one you guys are at, the blackout zone. The parade of uh, balloon animals. And we made that cannon. That was wonderful. What was his name? Somebody bring up his name. I can't remember for the life of me. His name is Sal. 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 Yeah. Goose Goose has his partner out there on the other side of the compound away from Sal. Is it just Sal and his balloon menagerie? Is that it? Yeah, I think yeah. it's Sal and his balloon menagerie. And he has a yeah. cool balloon device and a duster. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was yeah. the last thing we saw, like, closing out last time was his And he was hitting out. a different side of the compound what? than the rest of the groups. Mm-hmm. While, yeah. um, while uh, uh, Joff Gunther, um, Goose's uh, army buddy, military buddy, um, was leading the throng of people to sort of uh, uh, cost one side of the of the compound. Uh, Sal and his balloon menagerie, um, now living animal balloons, were charging the front area of the compound trying to do something. Um, so I'm interested in kind of, I, I think... I think I want today to be have a little bit of a, a like a, just a short time lapse, maybe like a half hour. Um, Whatever that means. Um, so I think we're looking at this, and I think that includes you guys when we come back to you, but we'll get to that in a minute. But I'm going to use one of the tarot cards to determine uh, how this is gone, how this is broken. Oh, perfect. I love it. I'm going to use the Three of Swords uh, for the present. Error, misrule, and disorder. I think everything's gone all to hell. So I think we pick up on a scene of pretty... I, I don't want to get super gruesome but um i think there's been some injuries um i think we see uh sal 
uh, we sort of pick up and and it sounds more like a war zone than it did, uh, you know, like Burning Man last time. Um, uh, the, you can still hear the faint music in the background, but I think uh, at, at the entrance to this uh, blackout zone, we sort of like fade in and we see just a bunch of burst balloons um, across the the grounds. There are another few dozen of these uh, balloon animals still living, and they're still like accosting the the walls, trying to get over. Um, but every once in a while, we hear a pop um, as they either get shot or they get stabbed or they run into something. Um, and we just see them burst with these like flashing, like glittery lights of like energy coming out from inside them when they do. And we see like quote unquote, the bodies of all of these balloon animals uh, strewn across the field. We can tell that it's been, that it's a little bit later because you can just barely, barely see um, the hint of light on, on the horizon. It is pretty far off, um, but there's, it's just starting to get a little bit lighter. One balloon that just got scratched and slowly just <laughs> oh, I love it. Yes. Like in yes. Big Hero 6. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he's just like, he's, it, it, it's, it's a giraffe and it's like, uh, and, and it has like these weird, like, like, uh, spine things. So it almost looks like a dinosaur. And it's just like limping along, getting smaller and smaller. And it begins to deflate until the point where it deflates There's and it like not lays. There's air in the neck. And so the head is like, yeah, dangling. Starts sideways. falling down. And, yeah. Starts falling down and dangling. And it like leans up against the wall and over it and finally deflates and stops moving. Um, and then the camera focuses on Sal in handcuffs. Um, we see these like hyper tech uh, electronic uh, handcuffs that are around the back of him um uh and there are uh there's a half dozen of is uh, is corp uh militia members um surrounding him a few of them with guns drawn and one of them is yelling at him to make them stop turn them off whatever you do stop them and he uh sal i think is just grinning and not saying anything either here or or back at the crazy, chaotic, uh, Burning Man-esque scene, I'd like y'all to establish something that's going on here. It's been a half hour, and things have broken a little bit uh, uh, badly um, for the, the the masses here. What's going on? Well, I would like to see Sal be just a, a major focal point for IS Corp, so at least one of the smaller groups gets past the guards. The only thing about that is I think... Uh, uh, I think Things have not gone particularly well. I would, I'm okay with that, but I think if that's the case, then they may have also been detained by now. I've got something. Since this is 30 minutes in the future, uh, let's spend that two of cups inverted, the cross desires, obstacles, and hindrance, and have um, two factions break out. So we have Gunther, uh, Jeff Gunther, trying to lead a group. And then there's like um, the fire dancer guys trying to lead another group and they're at cross purposes. And so they they aren't really working together. Um, and that's kind of what's causing part of the problems. Yeah, I, I like that. So so we obviously have uh, Sal on one side and then we had uh, uh, GG, Jeff Gunther uh, on another side leading this big group trying to break past these defenses. And at some point, Another faction broke out where they were like, ah, this is too militaristic. This is not going anywhere, whatever. And they totally broke off and they're under different leadership. And they're just like, they're they're causing just complete chaos everywhere. Whereas uh, Gunther's, you know, actually trying to like mount an actual organized assault on this place. Um, and because this this other group is just causing complete and rife chaos, um, I think I think uh, that leads us back into the uh, uh, to the. Carl establishment. I think a group of them did actually bust through some of the guard area, some of the like guard ring, um, and maybe even broke down part of the fence. But I think they were immediately like shot and tased, or shot with these like rubber bullets and tased and taken down and put in cuffs. And so now, like this chaotic group is sort of like, uh, uh, like almost rioting um uh, they're half of them are getting like increasingly violent half of them are like scared and are backing away and then you have like the organized segment that is over off in the corner trying to do something and not accomplishing very much what else do you guys think uh, i think we see a school bus pull up and a bunch of young men and football uniforms uh piling out they're chanting something about carl uh, wh what is it uh, i remember right it was supposed to be carl for principal 
Oh, that's right. It was yeah, Carl. Yeah, Carl for president. I think I think now it's escalated, and now they're saying Carl for mayor. <laughs> so it's like gone up a step, and so they just like they're they're like they're they're chanting. They're all in their their football gear. Um, we see a, a, a few people down the line. Um, may actually, I'll say he's leading it. Um, we see a, a, not quite a familiar face, but somebody that that we should establish. There's a, there's a, a, a young kid looks to be about a freshman, um, and he bears a striking resemblance to Zed. Um, and he's leading the charge. Um, he's got like a I don't know. He's he's carrying something sort of like scepter like. What, what do you think that is, Zed? So it's a scepter. He's like a, like a baton, or like he's carrying something. Like he's like he's got something that he's you know almost like a flag or like a you know something that he's waving and ch- uh, chanting Carl for mayor, Carl for mayor. Yeah, I think it is like the school flag, but like the flag has been redesigned to show the crook and flail that Carl had in the oh, video that's good so yeah over top of the mascot yeah that's really good so it's got this school mascot on it and then they've they've uh, like some somebody in in like the like that's an art student or something uh like drew on this really beautiful crook and flail on it and so it's just this like the the garfield what is the carl what is the mascot for garfield uh high school i i'm looking i, I thought i had it written down but i've got <laughs> i got this five We're pages like of notes here man <laughs> actually if, if if i remember correctly it's the eagles because it was the same as my high school is it i think i think so <laughs> It is now. It's canon. I don't have well, anything written down for a mascot. I just have okay. the actual names. Well, since since we don't have anything written down and Eagles is the same as mine, let's go with Bearcat because Starshine said that and that sounds great. What is a Bearcat? <laughs> so I guess it's a it's a Bearcat in canon now. What's a Bearcat? Is that a real animal or is that a fake animal? I don't actually know. Yeah, it's a real animal. It kind of looks like a very large uh, um, red panda. Whoa, those are terrifying. Oh, that's sick. Okay. Oh, man. So it's this yeah. it's this stylized picture of uh of a bear cat um uh in the school. What are the school colors? Orange and uh, black. Just, or okay. <laughs> Great. Yeah, perfect. Orange and black. Kind of like Halloween the beavers, colors. right? Because it's in Oregon. Colors. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, sure. All right. So this stylized orange and black uh, uh, bear cat stylized oh. image with these uh, golden and blue, like golden and, and aquamarine uh, cro- crook and flail have been painted on them. And, and he's waving this flag, uh, 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 chanting, Carl for mayor, Carl for mayor. And they uh, they trundle out of the bus um, and start to join the throng. Uh, what else? Yeah, so I think the thing I'm going to add is there is a Mad Max style like float that has razors on it and it is, they are playing rock music but it is actually the the Garfield High School band. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I I actually really dig that. So behind the school bus uh, comes this float that they ha- were building for probably the, the rose parade. The, the rose parade. Yeah, um, it's probably it's probably an an old rose parade float that has no flowers on it, so they just commandeered it. Yeah, that makes sense. And they've like yes. tricked it out with these like spikes and like just a whole bunch and like and like, art, like pyrotechnics. Yeah, yeah, There's pyrotechnics like, and like sheets like, of metal and. It's got like like these big long uh, like uh, uh, like razor things. Maybe they put like uh, uh, one of the the like scoop. Oh my gosh! Uh, on like uh, a plow, uh, a plow. No, it's not a plow. It's like the other thing. It's like the man. I'm so, dude. My family's a tractor family too. I should fucking know. Yeah, I mean it's a, a, a oh, scoop. Yeah. You a backhoe. Like, you mean like a front end loader bucket? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. like one of those. But a like backhoe. like a yeah, like a bulldozer thing. They've got like put yeah, one of those on on the front. It's either a bucket or a blade. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's like the blade, for, or like there we go. It's like a snowplow blade. That, that I guess that does work. Um, and they put that on the front, and it just looks. It's kind of shoddy, but it does look insane and bonkers. And it's just arrived, and I think they're starting to clear out space to try and get a run at the walls. Um, and it's creating chaos, and it is really not looking good uh, at the moment because again, there's uh, uh, like there are these militia people. There are a bunch of people that have been tased and shot. There's tear gas going on. It's really not happy, but. These people it, have arrived. It is important to note that they are playing generic open music. 
that has no yeah, licensing attached to it. Yes, yeah. they're open generic, source, uh, yeah, open, open source, open source music, public public domain rock pep band music. Um, yes. and they are playing that. Yeah. Uh, uh, pulling up. Uh, they've got a bunch of band members. Um, on the thing and like around it and they're like also wearing like football gear and like weird stuff and they're like in their uniforms and it's just wild and crazy and they're they're making a go of it and um we see them start to like open up this space and like clear out stuff uh, in way like the football team does this cool little like uh phalanx uh before them um and uh, uh, they like start opening up space for this uh, for this float, and they start to build up speed. Um, uh, uh, and and you know there seems to be a collision in uh, imminent, uh, and then we hear some strange sounds. We hear some crackling, um, and then some deep rumbling. Um, and in the great distance, um, we can see these strange distortions in the air with a slight purple hue. And they start to get larger and larger and larger. And they open up a little bit in the aperture in the center. And we see this dark purple galactic looking area. And we see a long silver metallic object start to move through it slowly. And then we cut back to the boys. You guys have been in this armory, uh, uh, closed down for, you know, let's say between 15, 20 minutes, half hour, something like that. It's fuzzy. Who knows exactly? Um, but there's, it's been a little bit of time. What have you guys been doing um, for that time? I think I would have asked Fitz if he knew a way to, like, get into the intercom system or anything. I think that's possible, yeah. Um, I think uh, he would probably... Uh, I, I think that would probably be something you'd want to accomplish from the security center. Um, Wait, uh, either wasn't, on what, or, wasn't there a uh, closer, like, weren't we, like, in an airlock or something? Like, wasn't there a more inner room we were trying to get into? Yeah, so you guys are in yeah. the in the armory, and you're trying yeah. to get into the, armory. like, the archive room. Um, yeah, it's like a we're, we're, we're in a pass-through room. section. We've gone yeah, through one security see, room, we got to go through another. If you, if you, get on the intercom from this room and that way we could like make an intercom announcement about like finding us in the total opposite side of the building. Yeah. Um I think uh I think it would be possible. Um it would just be I think incredibly difficult. Likely he would need uh it would need to be a tyke shenanigans thing and it's going to be incredibly like it's going to be wildly difficult um because basically okay. you would be bypassing a bunch of like throughs and systems like that um uh that like, makes sense. yeah self defensive because but there is a um there is a security center in on this floor uh, you guys do know that and if you were there it would be much easier to do something like that cuz that would be where it would be centrally I mean, I've melted doors before. Do you want me to try and get through the door? Well, let's 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 uh, let me ask a more focused question. What have you guys do, done with the two uh, hostages that you have at the moment? What what have you done with them over the past uh, twenty minutes or so? Zed will give the guard a sedative, like he did the two guards in the first security room. Okay, yeah. Uh, why don't you roll Just me a needle in the butt? Why don't you roll me an average uh, upgraded twice for IS Corp? medicine check so all right folks, straight up to here work. it comes it's a dice actual S dice signing that job contract immediately boosts your immune system <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so i've got two successes a triumph and a despair Ooh, ooh, delicious delicious okay uh, i got that despair uh, already i believe um <laughs> two successes okay that's good stuff. Um, what, uh, what, uh, okay. So yeah, you, you, you sedate him. Um, I think it is, uh, not a, like, it's not an issue. Um, and it's not going right. to be an issue. I mean, they're effectively out for the rest of the encounter, quote unquote. Um, what do you think this triumph looks like? I mean, I was going to say for the rest of the, like the next 24 hours, he's not waking up, but <laughs> since you just let that happen, I mean, to be clear, this encounter is not going to last more than like four hours. So um, you okay. can still. I think do I've that. successfully intimidated the guy in the chair. 
Ooh, that's he's good. He's like terrified. He doesn't know what I just injected his friend with. Can okay. I play off that? Yeah, you definitely I was can. just if, actually spending a lot of time looking at my sheets, figuring out what I could do, and I've got it. Yeah, if you guys play off that, <laughs> I'll give you two blue dice for social checks against the, the guy you have duct taped. Um, that, I that am going to, to use a talent called counter offer. It's an opposed check discipline versus negotiation. Okie dokily. And dokily. I'm going to try and negotiate with this guy to help us. Help you do what exactly? Help you in general infiltrate it's the counter offer. I want, I want him to help us open the other door. We'll let him go. Okay. okay. Not sell it to us. Okay. Uh, what yeah. do I say? Well, you could either sit here tied to this chair and we'll let the doctor inject you and you'll wake up and be the bane of all of what happens. Or you can help us get through and just claim that you were bullied into it and we let you run away. Not to mention tranquilizers give one hell of a migraine. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's see. You're, it's going to be a one, ooh, one red, one uh, purple. Okay. One red, one purple. Well, that's a pretty actually, balanced. Yep. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's call it uh, two reds, one purple, actually. Oof. Okay. Well, and, that bodes badly for me. Since like we're helping him get an extra blue. Um, you'll definitely have two blue die from from the from the Zed thing, um, the intimidation thing. Um, I you you definitely could assist him. Um, I just it did, would depend on how you do that. I'm just standing over in the corner cleaning my gun. <laughs> okay. Just um, looking at him every now and then. Intimidation. <laughs> I, I, I don't see the only my only problem with that is I don't know that that's more like I don't know that that adds more intimidation um, from what Zed has already done injecting an unconscious person with a mystery, mystery substance. I mean, like, I think that wouldn't add to this guy's assumption that you're willing to do anything. So if you guys take a, another tack, maybe, but I don't think that's quite enough. Anybody else? I mean, he does still have pretty decent chances at this, I think. Yeah. And I'm going to put also a caveat on this. If I don't get a triumph, I'm going to call for a, another talent called natural, where it allows me to reroll a skill of check of my choice. If you don't get a triumph? Yep. Go ahead and roll. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Roll. All right. Here we go. Yeah, not just a success, but a triumph. <laughs> yeah, there's no triumph. That's for sure. Okay. So are you rerolling? Yes. Especially because that one's not good. <laughs> I love the sound of dice in the night. There's the triumph I wanted. Nice. Nice. One, two. Oh, but it straight up washes. It's one triumph, but a wash on everything else. Okay. <laughs> All right. Does that include the one success that the triumph generates? Uh, no, I didn't. I just, okay. If that's a, considered a success, then it's not a wash. Cause I've got, I've got two successes, two failures, uh, a dis, not a despair, uh, uh, an, an advantage and a disadvantage. Is that a despair? Threat. A threat. Yeah, yeah. A threat. Yeah, yeah. A threat. A threat. Thank you. A threat, a threat and an yeah. advantage and then the triumph. Okay. So you, so the triumph counts as a success. Yeah. It generates one success. So that is oh. a success. And, uh, 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 yeah. Success and a triumph. Okay. So I think what this looks like, um, let's see, what's, what's the talent called again? Uh, counter offer. And if I get a triumph, he becomes an ally for the rest of the, the rest of the session. Okay. 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 And, and then what, uh, what about the one you used to reroll? What's that? One called? Natural. That's on page 70. Ba, 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 ba. I can't okay, read. So 79. 79. I'm just like, I hate this job. I, th I think what this looks yeah, like yeah. is he like looks at you dubiously and he's like, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what's, and then I think, um, I think, I think Fitz comes up and he says, look, Cam, look me in the eyes. We know each other. Okay. They are talking a big game, but if you can help us there, you're not going to be hurt. And there's a reason why we're here. It's not just bluster. It's not just rebelliousness. There's some stuff going on that is not particularly good. Okay. Trust me, and I will keep you safe. And I think he he looks back at 
uh, at Carl and he's sort of like, like sh- is shaking a little bit and he looks over at the, like the person on the ground and at the mystery needle, um, and sort of just like says, okay, okay. All right. Uh, why, why are you doing this? Like what, like what's going on that would, I mean, I can't think of anybody that is more loyal than you Fitz. like what's going on. And like, you guys seem to be doing the right thing. Like, I don't understand. Like what, what is going on? Why are you fugitives in the first place? It was just so much easier to convince this guy that IS Corp is evil than it was to convince Fitz. <laughs> so yeah. What do you say? Like, uh, he's, he's asking this question. Like what, 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 we, what happened? We saw IS, we have video evidence of IS Corp killing people who turned them down for service. And, we don't want to do that. That that doesn't sound. They're trying to take over the world, basically. They're like having governments give up autonomy. They also murdered Goose's wife. There is that. What? I mean, that's technically why we're here now. I, actually, I, I I brought that one up. That was <laughs> that was the first thing I said. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was definitely the first thing. Yeah, <laughs> right yeah, yeah. they murdered my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that doesn't that doesn't sound like the IS Corp I know, but this it's been bugging me. This you seem like the last person that would pull something like this. So at the very least I I'll help you guys figure stuff out. Um I don't have I don't have high credentials, but I can help you a little bit. Well, we can have you open that door over there and then have you leave so you don't get hurt. Okay. All right, just... I think you should just take a sick day. I can <laughs> do that. Uh, Fitz, you know where I live, okay? If if you get proof, um, if you can show it to people, um, let me know. Because that's... I don't want to believe it, but if I'm being honest, it it could make sense. And I think they'll they'll walk over to the uh, to the archive door. They uh, swipe their card, put their pin in, uh, do the biometric, do the eye scan, all of that stuff. And it opens up, and they open the door, and they say, "Go ahead. Is he going to be okay?" Pointing to the oh garden. yeah, it's just something I uh, cooked up in my garden. It'll keep him out for you know four to six hours. Yeah, he's an actual Depending doctor. On his metabolism. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna th- I'm gonna thumb point at him as I walk by. He's an actual doctor. All right. Um, Before we leave, I reach into my backpack and pull out a uh, copy of the aliens document the UFO. that I found and uh, hand it to him. What? Here's your evidence. What is this? <laughs> this just looks like nonsense. The truth is there, man. You just got to read it. Okay. How many pages of this document? Because, like, you guys stole a file. How much of it did yeah. you copy? Like, how much of- did you hand him a full file folder copy of all of the stuff, or did you hand him just like one page? Full folder. Uh, oh I my god! Went to the public library and made like twelve copies. Okay. All right. Um, I guess I'll, I guess I'll dig through this. Um, I'm gonna get out of here, and I, I recommend you guys keep quiet about what you're doing. Um. Pretty much everybody is on the lookout for you. And I mean, Fitz, you know, like training's pretty intensive around here. So uh, I, I would be careful. Um, and Surprisingly, we walked right through the front door and nobody even batted an eye. You know, I was wondering how you guys got in here in the first place. That's kind of insane. <laughs> so if you keep that level of discretion, then you should be fine, I think. Um, I've never really been... We even waved at the guard as we walked by. Yeah, okay. Well... Uh, good luck, I guess, and stay safe. And just remember that we're people here, I guess. And he sort of like glances back at the guard on the floor, um, and then he will uh, he will get GTFO, uh, run away. Um, and uh, it it gets quiet. You guys now have access to the archive room. Um, what uh, what do you do? I want to hold the door, wait for everybody to walk through. Keeping watches, I assume Fitz is going to go get the archive. I'm also going to jam a bunch of paper in the door, the door catch, so it doesn't lock on its way out. Okay. 
Um, all right, so you're jamming the door. You guys are going to try and get the information you need. Okay, so um, again, because I don't really want to be doing a whole bunch of rolling uh, unless it's for the bad guys, <laughs> let's call this a uh, a tyke roll, um, except Fitz will assist you with it um, uh, because you guys are almost certainly going to need... I, I mean, unless you want Fitz to just do it and you don't want to add in any shenanigans. Um, I, I guess that's up to you. Um, it, it, do you guys want to have Tyke go into the machine and try it? I mean, it's it's going to cost him strain to do that, or do you want it to just be fits? Yeah, uh, what's your strain at right now? Oh, I'm at like 11. Oh. Okay. Oh. Like Wait. We have plenty to burn. What's your total? <laughs> 15. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. What? No, you're actually doing pretty good. I'm, I'm surprised. You have more yeah. strain than I thought you did. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm impressed at your, what's the word? Uh, conservativeness? Something like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been watching that. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. I don't want to go down too early. All right. So, yeah. Uh, is is Tyke going to be like leading the charge on this and then getting Fitz's help, or are you going to have Fitz do it? No, I'm, I'm going to try it. Okay. So whatever, what is your uh, characteristic and what is your uh, skill in this? Characteristic is willpower and my proficiency. I've got three ranks. Okay. Or so if, if, okay, so Fitz has five and three. Um, so if your characteristic is less than five, use that. If your skill is less than three, use that instead. And to be clear, what information are you looking for uh, connecting up to this server? That is a good question. What information am I looking for? Uh, number one is the name of the person who gave the order for my wife to die. Okay. And the wife, actually, that whole file. <laughs> yeah, that whole thing, not yeah. just their name. The wife, right. maybe the wife's involvement yeah. in IS Corp as a whole. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go- Goose's wife. That's number one. Perfect. What's her name? Who's his wife? Is is there anything else? Yeah, maybe we should make a rank, like how successful I am, <laughs> how many of these different things we get. Well, that's that. I don't know. I'm pretty sure Zach has one. <laughs> yeah, let, that, let's just say Genesis I'm prepared works. for that. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's let's call that good for now. Your difficulty is going to be four reds, one purple, and two black dice. Yeah, this is. Uh, Do you say two black? Yes, dice? two black dice. There is more. Um, you will also, when the roll is done, you will add two, or you will add one failure and one threat to the roll. Okay. So as you guys hook up, Fitz looks over to you and he says, I really hope you're ready. We're dealing with my defenses here. This is going to be the hardest thing you've ever tried. We're also probably a number of degrees separated from this server. This is going to be tough. All right. Do, do, do that roll do. Nothing I can do to help. Yeah, good luck. I got nothing to help you either. I'm going to wander <laughs> around forget- and actually look for real <laughs> files. Don't forget your... Oh my goodness. Your blue dice from the technopathy. I did, yeah. So this is going to be two failures, two despairs. Oh, jeez. But five advantages. Uh, oh, that's yes. delicious. That's upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Five advantages, you said? Well, they know yeah. we're here now. <laughs> <laughs> that is enough to know why you failed. This information is not stored locally on this server. Um, so not only are you going through this server's defenses, you're going through the defenses of everything in between this server and the server that it is stored on. Five advantages is enough to know that the server that it is stored locally on is in this building. It is not in the blackout zone. It is in this building. So you do know for a fact that it is here. But every degree of separation that you have is going to add more security protocols. The other thing, obviously, that you know is that Fitz is damn good at what he does. Because there is just (laughs) a bunch of bullshit that is stopping you from doing this. And I'm kind of interested in seeing like what that looks like from Tyke's perspective. Like, obviously, we have like the hacker montage from Fitz, but that's really boring. So I'm again, more interested in like what these like defenses look like from Tyke's perspective. Perspect- Tyke like sits down and goes into kind of like a, like kind of a Zen meditative. Like he's like, okay, I'm going to like be zoning out. He He's starting to learn what happens when he does this. I'm glad he started to sit down. Yeah, it's good. Just, like ball <laughs> his head on anything. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it take, it took him a while to get it. So he sits down. It's only like a fraction of a second from from your all's perspective, 
But to Tyke, he just spent like the last like five minutes like dodging bullets and like shooting mine beams at this giant fortress wall and just had like turrets going other like flying defensive vehicles like shooting at him and he's been in dog fights and stuff and he's like super tired like as soon as he comes out of it yeah though all you all saw was basically him close his eyes and then he suddenly was just like breathing heavily and sweating yeah I think it's like a full like action movie montage, but like interspersed with like sci-fi stuff as well. I think there's like a giant robot battle. There's like a, a like a Fast and the Furious like like there's you know a, a chase scene. Um, like you're flying fighter jets, light like, cycles, light cycles. Like d- gotta get the Tron in there. There's like some <laughs> some space battles and stuff like that. Like it's just we see these like short like m- like cu- like second long moments of Tyke like going through all this stuff and he's like changing the way he's dressed and like change like the scenery changes and all the, but it's all this really tense stuff and we just like cut back and and Fitz is like typing away and he looks relatively calm um but you know whatever and then you look over at Tyke's body and he's like sweating and is like like drooped and breathing really heavily and it looks horrible um and yeah you are just i think what is the thing that finally shunts you out of the system like what gets you after this long drawn out hard fought battle essentially what what gets you like what kills you quote unquote in the virtual space i'm gonna say like it was just this random moment i thought i had cleared everything out and i'm like all right i'm gonna get in and like even this fissure opened up in the wall and i thought i was gonna get through but it was just like opening up so this gigantic beam laser gun could like come out and just like dragon ball z style like shoot me and just like bury me into this like virtual ground yeah, you shatter oh. into and like, then this I virtual fell into my body, and you just like blast into your body, and like you, you, you guys all see him like convulse for a second, and like, uh, like oh, he's having over. a seizure. It kind of looks like he has start, starting to have a seizure. I um, mean, it lasts like like two or three seconds long, and then he starts to come out of it. Shove a shoe in his mouth because uh, <laughs> because of the wild, wild failure, the despairs and everything. I'm gonna give you an extra strain uh, for that, just one. And also, you activated a security trip. In fact, the same security trip that you guys ran into after the whole Dan debacle, and there's now a cybersecurity breach lockout going to happen. So all of the walls go this pure stainless steel drop down, everything goes smooth, Uh, the lights cut down and there's just these red emergency lights flashing. The intercom system says something to the effect of all personnel to their posts, there's been a cybersecurity breach, all personnel to their posts, et cetera, et cetera. Every door just slams uh, shut with these like, like stainless steel shutters and you guys are effectively stuck. Yeah, heavy deja vu. Let's see, yeah, I think that's two despairs worth of stuff. What do you guys do? Oh, look, building sanitation records from last year. I'll hold up a file. (laughs) There wasn't a data breach. I didn't breach anything. (laughs) Yeah, if we had breached something, we'd have something to show for it. We have nothing. Yeah. Hey, uh, we just tested their defenses. They should pay us. Do you happen to know uh, what went wrong and how we could make it more successful next time? We need to get past the first two walls of defenses. That's like how I process Mm -hmm. it. I'm like, we have to get past two walls of defenses. We need to get closer to the server. Never let your guard down. Giant beam. I'll, I'll, I'll give you this because again, you got you got five advantages. You went through five different scenes, okay? So one was like this really minor, like low budget action movie. The next was like Fast and the Furious chase style. The next was like fighter jets, uh, kind of kind of intense. The next was like World War II war movie esque, and then a giant space battle that was just insane. And then you got blasted by this giant laser beam. So you are pretty sure that there are. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, there you are on the fifth degree of separation from where the file is locally. So that is like that is information you solidly know. Fitz, do you have any idea where the server would be like the main one? I mean, there are floors under this. We should start going down. Yeah, we have to go deeper. Yeah. Okay. here we go. Going deeper. Yep. Can you all unlock the door for us then? I have no idea how we could possibly do that right now. Is this the filing cabinet room that like had all the files last time? Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Is there any other information we want to grab hard file wise? That, that was kind of the joke. That's why I held up the sanitation records. There's not a lot of important stuff in these boxes. I mean, we found aliens last time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I think he found aliens last time because they were sitting on the desk. I think we spent a story point to do it. <laughs> um, you you did in fact but but the door should be open because we wedged it we wedged it that's so true actually shut. yeah yeah Th- these, oh yeah these particular doors i think would be open um uh but it like every other door you, you can assume is gonna be locked down um uh stainless steel but yeah you guys wedged this one open so you you're able to do that um you well, also can't just sit around and wait for people there's the option of physically going through the floor i don't know how tough the building is but maybe we could just go down yeah, I'll try it. <laughs> this concrete floor? How do you want to do that? I don't know that it's concrete floor. Did you did you see a jackhammer I didn't? I would like to melt the floor. Okay. All right, cool. How are you melting the floor exactly? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Barazel. I assume he's I gonna Barazel. Tell it. it to melt. <laughs> yeah, but are you are you using are you going to be producing actual fire or are you just making the floor hot? I mean it's I'm magic. going to make the floor hot. Yeah. Let's let's assume okay. let's assume lightsaber physics. I'm not I don't have an issue with it happening. It was just if he was going to produce actual fire, I was going to help him. Okay. Oh, oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do real fire <laughs> with like my mind over matter. I oh. I can I can exercise pyromancy or something. OK, nice. sure. You know what? I'll, I'll give you that. So you can you can have a blue. You can either do the stat thing where you replace re- replace the higher characteristic of. So you guys are essentially doing it together or he can help you and give you a blue die. I'll, I'll leave that up to you. I've got two ranks in Arcana. What's your yeah, I only have matter? two rank. I only have two ranks in Mind Over Matter, and the characteristic okay, and I use is a four. Mine too. So it's gonna okay. Be yeah. So two, yeah, do do the blue die then. Basically, what I want to do from here on out is, if it'll help you guys, use the characteristic because that'll help you more than blue die. But if it won't help you, then helping will give a blue die. Basically, that. So y- you can provide assistance either way. This is an attack spell, so normally it would be just average. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think normally it would just be average. Um, so I'm gonna do you real dirty. Um, uh, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna upgrade you twice. Oh, uh- um, because the building physically is IS Corp and I'm going to upgrade you two more times because of something I'm not going to tell you. Um, so it's okay. going to be four upgrades. So it's it's not too bad. It's still only two reds and two purples. So I'm definitely stepping back. No, like, security things that pop off when he tries to do this hit me. I mean, if he, if, if you guys roll more despairs, I'm, I have to do bad shit to you. It is three successes... A triumph and one advantage. Holy wow. What the hell even? Sounds like two floors to me. (laughs) Yeah, with the triumph, I'd actually like to go through the second floor. Are you? Uh, Oops. Okay. (laughs) Got a little out of hand there. (laughs) You know, I'm inclined to 100% allow that, actually. (laughs) Let me just look at my hard written notes that I spent two and a half hours on earlier. Just give me just one second to like grieve a little bit at the two floors that you guys are skipping. <laughs> oh, we no. can spend the trial. It's still a really hot. Way, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I 100% <laughs> expected you guys to skip at least half of these. No, it's fine. What does this look like? And that's uh, two full straight. Zed just uh, says, melt snaps his fingers and points at an area in the floor and about uh, a six foot diameter perfect circle just drops and then like it keeps going and he's like whoops and it l- drops down to the third floor yeah okay so through the first floor you guys look down and you can see that there's a, a large uh, like open expanse area where the circle falls there's part of like a track uh, like a running track and you can see just some like exercise equipment in the area and then it burns through the second floor thank goodness nobody was standing there below us yeah that's gonna be carl sticking his head over the floor going oh oh this is so so good oh this is so delectable okay um i'm gonna use a i'm gonna use a card here real quick goodness kindness hope confidence soldier positivity joy good health Transformation, rebirth, end of a cycle. Uh, I'm While you're gonna doing have- that, Zed's going to open his backpack and uh, 
take out one of the uh, rock climbing anchors he has and attaches it to the whatever he can find and then attaches 60 oh, feet of God. rope. Zed, Zed reads too many <laughs> something novels. Too many adventure novels to not bring rope. Oh, my you gotta God. got to bring your rope. I'm going to use one of the deaths. Um, I'm going to use the present death. Oh, somebody was standing down there. See red oh. slippers sticking out. <laughs> yeah no it's much 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 worse than that you tie your rope off when it goes to the other floor it like falls down and you hear a bunch of glass shattering and there's a faint rumble as it like slams into the floor and now all you see is the like darkness and the red emergency lights and the intercom talking about the cybersecurity breach and the like little mini alarm going off. what do y'all do oops time to go climbing down the hole okay all right <laughs> I'm not going to make you guys roll for climbing down the hole. You go down the hole. Um, in the uh, you 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 go through. You see on the on the on the next floor down again is this big large rec room area with like uh, uh, exercise equipment and like there's a track and and stuff like that. It's like this big open concept thing. And then you go past that into the room below, and everything is very very on fire. There is this big blue chemical glow coming from just about everything. And there's this weird, strange, like chemically fire looking thing. Um, you see this like four foot chunk of stone basically that has slammed down and it has blasted into what looks to be some sort of lab. Uh, and it has done some really, really, really nasty stuff. Rip my sleeve off of my jacket and like wrap it around my face. Trying to protect from fumes. Okay, everybody, please roll me when you when you get down there. There's there's just a little bit of space or, like on top of this like stone circle that that melted down in, um, for you guys to like land and stand. Whereas everything's like utter chaos around you. Um, every when you all get down there, uh, everybody roll me perceptions. Let's call Is it, it easy. Uh, it's not easy. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna make it hard. Upgraded twice for IS Corp. So two reds and a purple. And if you are within short distance of me, you get a blue die. And with and engaged, you get two blue die. Let's call all of you engaged because you're standing on like a like a five ten foot like stone thing with fire all around you. So you're very 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 close to each other. Uh, nope, I still have two failures. Okay, and one advantage. Very good. One to spare. One disadvantage. Delicious. Three success and an advantage. Okay. This I is why Goose is our two scout. success and three disadvantages. Goose, I'm gonna I'm gonna make an call an audible. Your time in spec ops, um, you dealt with some weird stuff. Not like weird magical stuff, but like weird um like government uh science kind of stuff, like nuclear programs and that kind of BS. Um, and you recognize a physics lab when you see it. So uh uh, and you also recognize some really, really dangerous stuff when you see it. I think maybe either you've run a couple of ops where you've rescued people, like like, like uh, uh, pulled people out of this kind of situation, or you've like uh, uh, raided these kinds of places. Maybe just a, maybe just part of your your time, um, but you definitely have have dealt with this in the past. Um, this seems to be a physics lab of some sort where they do molecular atomic research, um, that kinds of stuff. Very very small particle research, um, and it uh, the uh, the stone melting into the ground landed in about probably the worst place possible where there are a lot of hazardous substances, um, uh, you know, ongoing uh, experiments and, and stuff like that. Um, and it has, it has gone very bad. Um, you got some advantages, right? Uh, I got one advantage. One advantage. Okay. That, that is enough to also tell that there are some uh, uh, minuscule particles um, that have escaped this area. And the reason you can tell that is there are little like um, dots in the walls that are in these like random patterns that look like something has bored through them. Um, and you know these particles to be particularly dangerous if they come in contact with people. Um, Tyke, you, uh, I think uh, this is going to be more on the like magical end of things. You, you can tell that there is some weird... BS going on here as far as like magical stuff goes. You're not a hundred percent sure like what's going on or how you know, but your skin like prickles. And I think you see these like faint auras um, all over the place that like nobody else feels like there are some like weird 
like transcendental substances that have also been uh, de like are decontained now because of this entry. Um, and this is a very, very dangerous room to be in. Um, uh, uh, you guys uh, are, are going to need to get out very quickly or you're going to start uh, taking uh, wounds. Um, because it is hot, it is, there are really, really crazy substances everywhere, um, and uh, it's just utter chaos. What do you do? I'm trying to start crawling back up to the floor above, but also pull out my phone and take pictures. Because <laughs> okay. all of this is super illegal. Yeah, is oh, it is. door? No private company has clearance for any of this. Yeah, and if they do, it's it needs to be heavily <laughs> regulated, and this is not that. Okay, so yeah, you start taking pictures and start climbing back up. Uh, what is everybody else doing? Is there a door? Yes, there. Uh, there. You can tell this is a big open area. You are just in one part of the lab, um, up against the wall where like a lot of the containment is. There is a door right near you, about like ten feet away, and there are doors on each of the other three walls as well, um, near the center of each. Which one's like furthest from the radioactive goo? Um, probably the one all the way on the south wall, which is also like the furthest where from where you guys are as well. Because you guys are basically, the, the place where you landed is like basically right on top of all of the bad shit. Should we go through that door over there? We should not go anywhere near that stuff. Yeah, I would say I Carl runs towards the other door that, that uh, Zed just pointed at. Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, like, out is, is good. We could just jump over this, right? Kind of. It is nasty. Um, If, if you're going to do that, Carl, I, wanna, I want a coordination check from you. I'll call yeah, it average. Zed will try to... Uh, yeah, so anybody that's going to try and, and physically get around or over the chemicals and whatnot, let's actually call it hard. And wait, wait, are they just sitting on the ground? It's it's kind of like if you took a big glass case, like an, a glass armoire um, that had a bunch of like uh, beakers and boxes and like glass containment objects, and you dropped like 300 pounds of stone on that, and it just all went everywhere it just exploded outward um and now there's this big like chemical fire um basically a, a, like you know tw 20 feet around you guys in this big radius where everything exploded out i missed the difficulty for this it's gonna be hard and is corped so two two red and a purple what skill do we use for this coordination coordination Yikes. yeah i'm not doing that i'm gonna fly over this stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay uh, so yeah, I, the good I, news i'm gonna assume that's mind over matter because yeah I don't it think, is yeah because you're physically going so yeah um i i think it will be easier for you then slightly uh i think it would be average um the only issue is you're casting a spell so it'll be upgraded twice um for i escort so it'll be two reds for you two I'm reds gonna use my touch of fate to get two blue die okay two successes Okay, two successes from Carl. Wait, so is it just two red for me? Yeah, two red for you. I've got two successes. The bad news is I've got five threats. Holy crap. <gasps> All right, I got four successes and one adva advantage. Okay, yeah, Tyke, I think I think you you brain up and you you zip across the room. Carl, I don't know what is what is it like from Carl? Like you're you're a bit of an athlete, so um what is, you know, what's that? I'd be straight with? line and just jumping over stuff because I'm assuming there's there's no columns of fire or flames jutting sideways out of the wall for me to duck and roll under. It'd just be stuff on the floor. Yeah, not really. It's just like, for, for, yeah, from the floor. So you like leap far over it. You get just barely away from the edge of the fire and like tuck and roll and like pat yourself out real quick and you seem fine. Zed, what does this look like for you? Because this is an agility check and that's the one thing Zed is really bad at. It actually looks uh, comical. He tries to like jump and like do a forward roll to like get past and like he succeeded unfortunately like with that much threat i think he got goo on him yeah i think that makes sense i don't think you're gonna take any damage <laughs> but i think you have been exposed to some stuff yeah he's gonna ditch his lab coat so i'm gonna lose my uh my special there might be another one hanging sucks. on the wall. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I think it immediately you can tell that it starts eating through that. I think you you ditch the lab coat. You can you can tell that that a very small amount has touched your skin. Um, you're not sure what exactly, but you have been 
exposed to something. Um, it's really hard to tell because it's all like freaking in this giant pile. Um, you've been exposed to this thing um, and it did, and it ruined your life. No more IS Corp mad scientists. <sighs> so it's okay. I got a failure and a four advantage. Yeah, that's, um, I'm going to do, that's one failure you said? Yeah. Okay, so base three wounds plus the one failure. So you're going to take four wounds. I think the advantage is, is that it's, you're only burnt. Um, like it is charring. It is like you are getting burnt by this chemical fire. You are not actually being exposed to any of these weird substances. So the opposite of Zed, basically you get through and you have been damaged. You've been, you've got some like minor burns. Well, some pretty decent burns. Um, but you haven't like been exposed to any of the weird bullshit that is here. Um, so yeah, you guys are now, uh, on the other side of it. Um, you can all tell that this, uh, this like chemical fire is taking up like a quarter of the room now and it is spreading pretty quickly um again you see that there are four doors on one on each wall one of them the one that you were nearest to when you first came down is now sort of becoming encompassed by the chemical fire the other three it hasn't quite gotten to it uh, uh yet what would you guys like to do open the door and leave for the furthest one right Yes. Yeah. Okay. You guys are going for the furthest one. The okay. one that was the one that was least on fire. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To the south. So uh, you you guys also uh, uh, you can tell that there like are some pretty nasty fumes and strange things uh, uh, starting to mount as well. Um, you enter into uh, uh, so I will say the the southern door is is a security door and it is currently in lockdown mode. Um, so it is essentially this big stainless steel like blocker in front of a door where how do you guys get through so it's just a big stainless steel door basically it's like th there was the security door and then there is these like stainless steel panels that like slammed uh across into it through these through like these slits in, in the the door frame um and are like they're basically like like uh like if you barred a door a bunch of different times they're like these big stainless steel slats um that are now barring it basically. were all four doors like that Yes. No kind of like keypad or uh, I mean anything. Part of the thing that the the lockdown uh, does is it it like completely it closes over the, like the keypad basically folds into the the panel. So it is a a doorway with like these these stainless steel boards up against it and no like obvious mechanism for opening or closing. I think we need some more uh, magic bull crap. Melt. <laughs> All right. Uh, same thing. The same difficulty. Yep. I think I said two reds, two purples. That sounds right. Yeah. I'm going to, while you're doing that, I'm going to actually roll Fitz's thingamajig to get out of the fire. He does not do particularly well. Steps on every oh, chemical. Club. Okay. So I've got two successes and two threats. Two successes and two threats. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you melt open the door uh you can see now uh, uh you, basically i think i think this is opening a a small hole um uh let's call it uh basically i think it's going one of the threats is it's going to be it very it's going to be very difficult to get through so it's going to take a lot of time for all of you to squeeze through this thing um uh and uh i think what happens afterwards um you you see that it opens up into another lab area another one of these big open places um looks relatively similar um with a whole bunch of these like lab, lab equipment stuff um and i think uh the the other threat is that you can tell that the fumes are really really intense because the pressure differential um now between the two rooms means that this like deep smoke goes into the next room and it like shows you just how bad it's getting in this room uh, and it is nasty so um uh it's going to take you guys some time to get through this and the fumes are real bad coming from this room um but that does open up the door for you if you would like to go through okay uh yeah we just have to keep moving okay that makes sense so um let's that let's let's, let's do a group coordination um for this um so whoever has the highest agility and whoever has the highest co coordination uh i got a three in agility no coordination any of you are better than zed is i had two agility that Oh, you have two agility? Okay, so it's literally just three green dice then? Oh my right, goodness, right. you guys. Well, I found your weakness. Three greens against two reds. I'll give you a blue die since it's a, a group check. You guys are helping each other. Um, this is just to see how, how quickly you're able to get through the hole. Should be fun. Yeah. 
uh, one success, one advantage. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think that means you guys are able to help each other through the hole. Uh, uh, you, you know, you, you're able to cover up uh, enough and and breathe in little enough of this stuff, whatever it is, um, that it's not permanently damaging at this moment. I think you guys are probably a little out of breath, maybe some coughing, stuff like that. But you guys are able to get through fine. And now you are in what looks like a chemical lab. Um, so you can see there are fume hoods, you know, all these like chem supplies, stuff like that. Um, kind of simil similar, a lot of these like large glass uh, dividing walls. Um, it looks like you would expect the previous room to look if it wasn't currently destroyed. Um, there are, uh, there's a wall uh, or there's a door in uh, near to you in the northern side, uh, the northern wall, and there's a door in the um, uh, uh, eastern as well. Um, so there are only two other doors leading from here. And uh, yeah, it's this big open like chemical lab space. Um, what do you guys do? I'm gonna put a door or a chair up against the hole we just came through. Okay. The plan. Something to block the hole. Okay. Zed would like to investigate the chemicals. Okay, cool. Hmm, interesting. He does have alchemy as a skill. Okay. What's he doing to investigate them? Well, I mean, I'm guessing they're labeled. <laughs> so here, here's what I will do. Reading. He's reading. Yeah. I will give you, you can either do knowledge for mostly mundane stuff, but like hard to know mundane stuff, or you can do alchemy for like maybe if if there's any like weird like magic potentially magical stuff going on, it will be up to you what you are looking for specifically, um, and you'll use whichever skill. Uh, I think I'll use alchemy for alchemy. I'm gonna give this a. Um, I'm a, it's gonna be slightly <laughs> harder for alchemy. I'm gonna make it um, daunting upgraded twice. So. Two reds, two purples. While he's doing this reading and all this ex investigation, I'm going to go to the door that is 90 degrees opposed to us, which I believe you said would be east. Yep. And I'm going to use my uh, crook and flail to press against the opposing wall and push this door through the frame. Okay. Uh, same difficulty. Two reds and a purple, I believe, is what I said. One success. The first thing you can tell is there is some serious bullshit going on. It is not very much of it. You think like probably three quarters, if not more, maybe four fifths of this lab is dedicated to like normal chemistry. But there is a big portion that is dedicated to some scary alchemy. Let, let me actually ask you this because I, I don't, you know, I haven't thought about this. What does alchemy look like um, in this in this setting? I mean, I would think it looks a lot like chemistry, but uh, it seems to like not in a radioactive way, but in a magical way, it kind of like glows a little bit and like the hairs on your arms stand up when you get close to it. And then like, what, what kind of stuff does like, like what is, what is the purpose of it? How does it like work? Well, I, I'm sort of picturing like some weird technology magic hybrid. Like they have like a miniature particle accelerator. <laughs> it's sort of like they discovered like once they start to combine like another layer of stable substances, they're able to actually do magical weird stuff. They have like a table with um, like an alchemy circle configuration on it. And you can like flip a switch and it'll like alter what the alchemy circle looks mm, like. And that's cool. Yeah, and and like uses lasers it. to draw the symbols. That's cool, actually. Yeah, I think it would be for the, it, it wouldn't be a particle accelerator. That's more the physics side of things. It would be a, like a centrifuge or something like that. I think there's also like floating in one of the, I guess we'll call it a potion for lack of better word. But I think because we've seen a part of this and it might be something they recovered from Goose, but it's a part of the horror. Ooh. Like Ooh, it's I a, dig that. it's that piece that like, uh, yeah goose had recovered okay, and man. it's like in this uh gelatinous viscous liquid okay and then i'm a suspension uh yeah a suspension um yeah it, this can come from anybody and it, there can be multiple of them but what is a scary thing that alchemy can accomplish that they are doing here creating a person. i would say a lot of blue fire in the other side of the room that's the physics lab. Come on. I like the homunculus thing. Yeah. Okay. So there's like homunculus creation. So I think there's like this menagerie display area where there is like, there are these like grotesque, like 
slightly humanoid, uh, like chemical things, like moving around in these like cages, basically. Um, and they're like making weird little noises and they look like grotesque and terrible. And they're all made out of like different weird substances. Um, uh, and there is one of the cages is empty and it looks like there is a door that is open to it as well. What else, what else do we think alchemy is doing here? That is scary. Accelerated regeneration. Okay. So like there's a video playing on a monitor in this room that shows them like actually cutting off one of the homunculus's arms and the arm just like almost instantly regrows back. Okay. I'm actually going to take that one step further. I'm going to say oh, good. that augmentation in general <laughs> is a thing that's happening. Um, and in fact, there, there is, there, there, I think there are a series of screens, um, in, in the like alchemical portion of the room. Um, and they are replaying like, uh, uh some of them are like playing like live feeds of these, like what look like cells. Um, and then there is one that is like, uh, uh, just open to a, like a list of um, a, what looks like a like an experimentation list. I think Zed, you happen upon this. One of them catches your eye actually for a moment. Um, you just see something that looks. You're not sure why, but there's like a file name or whatever that looks like something. Something strikes you about it. What do you do? I'll examine it more closely. Open the file on the computer. So it opens up, and very suddenly you realize that the reason that it sort of stood out to you is because it is named with a very significant like date to you and initials. I, I believe, let's see, the initials would be B something V. What is Benjamin's middle name? It could be Joshua after his father. Okay. Yeah. So I think that there, there's a, yeah. a, uh, the folder is named like uh, BJV and it says uh, BJV testing and like a date. And that date is like, let's say nine, nine or so months ago. Um, and you open up the folder and you click on one of the files and you, you don't really realize what was like significant about it until you see this video file of your brother sitting in a cell room. Um, similar to the live feeds that you see next to this. We see him lying on a, like a cot, more like a hospital bed up against one wall. And he looks sickly um, and weak, not at all like what we saw at the beginning of the episode with him, you know, confidently waving this banner, uh, you know, look, he, he looked like a strapping young lad, you know, kind of bulky, um, you know, big for his age, but this looks like, like he's emaciated. He's, he's pale. There's like strange coloration on it. There's strange coloration on his skin. And you, you recognize him looking like this very, very much because it was a very tough time in your life when he was sick and he was getting treatment for uh, some pretty, pretty nasty stuff. He's laying in this bed and uh, a person comes in and he seems to be asleep. Um, and you see them pull out a little case um, and you see some faintly glowing liquid um, uh, that you immediately recognize as some sort of alchemical agent. Um, they pull it out from the little bottle into a... a, a into a syringe and they in inject it into one of those hanging chemical bags. What are the, I don't know what they're called. IV. Yeah. Yeah. It's there we go. Easy. Thank you. Saline, saline drip. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. They in inject it into an IV drip and you can start to see this like weird glowing chemical drip go like go into his IV. Um, and you sort of just like, uh, th then the video like monitors him for a little bit. You see they they strap him down and he convulses at some point and eventually uh, they give him another injection. They you know that happens again and then they take him out of the room. Um, a little bit later, you know, like you see you see you uh, the video ends after that and you see just really quickly you click through and and pretty much all of these videos seem to be very much the same. They seem to be close to daily videos, um, almost exactly matching the dates where he went into the hospital to get treatment. And they, they lasted basically the entire time for his treatment. And they are all videos like this of him being put into a room, substances being put into him, 
uh, of an alchemical nature and then some monitoring uh, over the course of, of, of a few hours and then him leaving. And over the course of this, he actually starts to look better and better. Like he, he looks less emaciated. He looks, you know, he starts to get stronger. Um, eventually they, they stop strapping him down. Um, uh, you can tell that they, they sort of, uh, 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 drug him a little bit, but they get him up and they have him start doing like exercises and you see that his muscles start to grow. He starts to get stronger. He starts to get more lively, but they keep him sort of half sedated so that he doesn't seem to have a memory of, of this. Um, you can tell because he's got this strange gloss, uh, glassy eyed look on his face uh, whenever they wake him up. I think you, you, you're watching this last, uh, th this last video real quick. Um, and it's just like going through and it's, it's him getting stronger. Um, and I, I think, uh, somebody like, you, you see somebody like motion that you know something that is very obviously like this is this is done we're good you know send it back or whatever and then you just hear this like slam um as uh like this this weird hum and slamming as the door blasts open uh uh from carl's magic and i'd like to make my discipline check you'd like to make oh okay i'm <laughs> cool with that and it's an average is this for for your talent yeah. Okay. Yes. So it would be base average. Um, I think this, you are undergoing some pretty decent emotional turmoil, which will upgrade it once. This is also a stressful situation, which will upgrade it a second time. Oh, but it doesn't up upgrade. It just increases the difficulty. <laughs> uh, okay. Four purples and not no reds. Um, let's actually call it three because I, I kind of want this to happen. So three purple. Yeah. Three purple, no reds. Okay. A triumph. Two success, well, three successes with the triumph and a threat. Okay. You transform one way or another, but with you succeeding the role, you are able to uh, go into a hybrid form if you so choose. And he will. Picking the personality characteristics and all of that stuff of whichever form you wit, uh, desire. So what does this look like? So only the right arm transforms with uh, the claws. The skin just kind of like bursts and falls to the floor. You hear the wet splat of muscle as it stretches. Um, he grows one horn on the opposite side, so on his left side. And then his knees reverse and he grows not quite as tall, but a bit bigger. And then he says, I'll kill them all. And then he turns around and runs for the door. I think you have a really awesome, like, badass scene of seeing him transform like that and then like after you have like a second to appreciate how awesome he looks you see tyke just start to like retch like in the background <laughs> yeah. from like yes. watching him partially transform so, oh, no, i kind of whoa. imagined it like a anime magic girl very much scene. yeah very Sailor much Moon. yeah exactly that <laughs> can i add one detail one of his eyes so zed normally has what color eyes uh hazel Hazel, okay. One of his eyes, you, you can choose which, starts to get brighter and more golden until it's almost like glowing with this like luminescent golden light and the other turns into like this Barazel fiery demon eye. And I think that is that is where we like see this like shot of like this this darkness behind and the emergency lights and just his eyes and they, they sort of shift color. Um, and that's when you say, I'll kill them all um, and turn towards the door. Does that work? Is that okay? Yep. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. So I guess that's where we will end for tonight. Unless anybody has anything else. Uh, we, we see obviously the picture of Tyke retching in the corner. Uh, does anybody have anything else to add before we are done? Yeah. Carl doesn't notice because he's been working on the door. So it doesn't even, I mean, okay. Carl's is going to bear a Zed. Zed, Bear -a -Zed. Zed, -Zed. Zed, -Zed. Zed is going to go cruise it because going to go cruise it by through the open door. Okay. So uh, thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, super appreciate it. Uh, we have a discord. Uh, link in the description. We have a t Twitter at RPGs Anonymous One. We talk in character there. We answer questions. If you guys want to suggest something or like give us magical items or add something to the story, give us a character name, uh, try and get in the story yourself, any of that stuff, join the Discord, be active, uh, tweet at us. Uh, we take as much uh, inspiration as we can from there. We should, uh, by the time of this posting, we should have uh, a couple of new YouTube videos out um, in the uh, in the Teaching Jacob Genesis uh, uh, stuff and uh, in our original soundtrack, um, potentially some other stuff. 
And by this time, we should have started uh, streaming uh, either Thursday or Friday, uh, one of those two, uh, Nerd Talk, where we just kind of chat about this stuff um, on Twitch, at, at our Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash RPGs Anonymous. Um, so you can find us all there. Uh, anything else to plug, you guys? Again, episode one of the Ace of Clubs dropped, talking about Brave New World, and episode two should be coming within the yes. next couple of weeks. Yes, good stuff. Where where can can people find that on what, all 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 the podcatchers? All the casters. Yep, all the casters. Just Ace of Clubs and on Twitter as the Ace of Clubs P one. Okay, cool. Check out Snyder's Return. Uh, they are a really cool UK D and D podcast. We'll play a promo for them right now. Snyder's Return is a tabletop role playing podcast featuring interviews and a D and D five E actual play adventure. So you can learn about different game systems and content creation while also listening to us disrupt everyday life on the Sword Coast. We release episodes every Tuesday and Thursday on your podcasting platform. So come join us as we improvise, adapt, and overcome. They're really cool. Uh, we, we've we listened. Uh, they, they, they have some really good stuff. It, like They're shorter episodes, um, and it's really enjoyable. Definitely take a look at them. Thanks for coming, everybody, and we will see you in the multiverse. <laughs>